Hey everybody, Ryan Dorn here from 360 Ad Sales and Brain Swell Media, and of course your friends at Shrekky Media, Media as well. And we're here today to talk about revenue-centric websites, and oh man, let me tell you, by far, easily one of my favorite subjects to talk about. You know, one of the things that's really cool is I've had the opportunity to be a part of over 3,000 website builds in, in my career. And I know that sounds like an astounding number, uh, but if you really think about when I got into this business in 1995 and 96, in terms of building websites, it was right when AOL first came out. And if you remember, those of you that remember AOL and CompuServe, uh, you'll remember having a really funky email address, and you probably remember sounds like this, as you logged into your modem, okay? <laughs> and some of you that are watching, if you don't remember that, um, well, welcome to our world, okay? It was really slow. The cool thing is now today, in the media business, we have an awesome opportunity to utilize massive amounts of bandwidth. Did you know that over 80% of Americans use the Internet and have access to high-speed Internet on a daily basis? Over 80%. That's almost everybody, right? So it tells us as media companies we could do some really cool things to drive revenue. Today we're going to look at about 10 different websites. We've got a gentle mix of B2B and consumer magazines. Magazines that are large and magazines that are small. We're going to visit these websites one by one, and what we're going to do is dissect them from a revenue and an audience development perspective. Now, why audience development? Audience development because, obviously, if you can get people to your website a lot more often, you're going to grow your page impressions, your unique users, and the number of ads that you serve in any given 30-day period. So, all right, let's start out with one of my favorite websites, which is uh, foodandwine.com. And you'll notice one of the things, and I'm going to show you a couple of these pop-ups in different varieties. You'll notice when you first go to foodandwine.com, you're going to see this pop-up uh, that appears on the screen. Now, let's talk through this and talk about a couple of cool things and a couple of negative things. First of all, do pop-ups work? The answer is yes, they absolutely do. Are they intrusive? The answer is yes, they are. But do they work? Yes, they absolutely do. This is a sign-up to be one of the first to get their new food and wine daily recipes newsletter. Let me tell you guys, I don't know what business you're in, but if you have access to recipes or things that involve food and maybe even wine as well, recipes are the spice of life. You've got eight or ten customers that deal in recipes on a monthly basis, and people absolutely love it. Now, a couple of cool things here. One, you could sponsor this, okay, these e-newsletters in this area, on this pop-up, it could be sponsored. That'd be pretty cool. What is another reason it's good to have these kind of sign-ups? Well, it's because of, of big data. Foodandwine.com, they want to make sure that they have a really nice big data plan. So let me ask you, what are you doing on a monthly basis to bring the new data into your database? Also notice a really cool concept here, all right? So this means we're enticing people. We're giving them another reason to sign up. They're going to get a bonus gift, free instant download of our favorite grilling recipes. Let me tell you guys, this is a perfect example that any of you that might even be small publishers on this webinar today can easily execute. It's something that's straightforward. It's a simple pop-up. It's a small piece of JavaScript that you can find by Googling pop-ups. Very straightforward, very simple. Now, will Firefox, Google Chrome, etc., block these? They will in some capacities, depending upon the size. Also notice, though, they've got really great, nice terms of service right here at the bottom of this pop-up. Now, this is a straight pop-up. It pops open a new browser window. Are there some other ways that you can handle this? Absolutely, you can. As an example, uh, let's go over and look at this, the, the Village Voice magazine uh, from New York City. You'll notice this is a different type of pop-up. This is either HTML5 or Flash. I can't really tell exactly at face value. I would tell you this, though. If you can get over to a point where you're using HTML5, it's going to be a really beautiful thing. Why? HTML5 works specifically for responsive website design. HTML5 is typically platform agnostic, meaning that it's going to work on any platform, any device, whether it's a Kindle, a Nook, whether you're looking at it on an iPhone or a Droid or looking at it through your Google Glass, whatever it is, it typically is going to work. This is just another example of them trying to grow their database by asking you 
to join with the Village uh, Voices uh, newsletter. Now, so it's another great example. Now, you'll notice they have a little CAPTCHA device here at the bottom. One of the nice things about that CAPTCHA device is it typically helps you stop spammers. Also, notice something else they have here at the bottom that's awesome. Remind me later. So it's going to pop up to remind you later. No thanks. Or you can click here to go and sign up. Also notice a direct link to their privacy policy. Now, why don't more publishers do it? Come on, Food and Wine's doing it. The Village Voice is doing it. Why don't most publishers deploy this type of strategy? The reason is pretty simple. They find it intrusive, and they think that their users are going to run. Well, how do you limit that bad impact? First of all, only have this pop up maybe in front of a user maybe once every 72 hours. The other piece is once they sign up from their IP address, okay, don't bring it back in front of them again. And technology exists to make that happen. All right, let's pop back over to food and wine. Let's talk about some pretty cool things here. A couple things I really like about this website, they have a really nice branding bar all across the top of this website. Now, some of you that are on this call today, you have multiple websites, multiple publications. Some of them don't even relate. Some of them do relate. And I really want you to understand that putting together networks of websites, presenting them in a really nice way like this is excellent to drive audience, and excellent to drive revenue from that growing audience. Now, what else do we find on this website that's really awesome? A couple of things for you. Many of you only have these main page images at the top and nothing else, okay? Food & Wine is, understands what a lot of others do, and that is Food & Wine video. Video is something we're going to talk a lot about today. I've done a lot of webinars on video. Video is straightforward. It doesn't have to be Hollywood. Advertisers will potentially pay you to shoot video of their products or their services and feature them on the main page of the website. When it comes to native advertising or paid content, okay, I call it paid content. The experts, they call it native advertising. I'm not trying to fool anybody. It's paid placement. Video is a great way to introduce your advertisers to the paid content game. All right, also, as we scroll down, what you're going to see is the sign-up for the dish right here. Okay? It's a nice, clean newsletter sign-up. I picked this example to show you because I really want you to understand something. Big data is it. When you've got companies like Knowledge Marketing up in Minnesota, that's all they do is help you manage big data. When you can manage your data, you can make money from it. Now, also notice something here. I'm on the main page of the Food and Wine website. Have you noticed that this image isn't flipping, turning, rotating, or moving? Why is that? The reason is because larger website publishers are recognizing that those flash rotators on their main page actually hurt their website traffic. Why is that? It's typically because most users will not sit there and wait for that thing to change. And so because of that, it actually hurts your total page impressions. This is a lot more clean, it's a lot easier to follow, and it gives me a really nice idea of what's in store. All right, now, you'll notice here right in the middle, all right, they've got a really nice graphic, okay, for, uh, for this, uh, this, this piece of editorial here. And for me, it's really excellent. I love it because it's very eye-catching. Also notice that when I mouse over this image, it automatically gives me the icon to pin it on Pinterest. Now, why don't a lot of you use Pinterest? Well, you don't because typically most publishers don't personally use Pinterest. Here's the thing to remember. Do I love Pinterest? Do I use it on a daily basis? I don't. But I understand that a lot of people do, especially, especially if you're dealing with a female demographic that's over the age of 25. Okay, 25 to 54-year-old females really, really like Pinterest. So if that's your demographic, you might want to look at it. Also, it allows you to weave revenue opportunities into your Pinterest boards where you allow advertisers to feature recipes, new products, uh, photo galleries, fashion shows, whatever it is, it allows you to be able to sell into that opportunity as well. Now, what you're also going to notice here as we scroll down the main page is they do a very, very nice job of being able to showcase for you multiple pieces of content. So notice every time I scroll, 
I'm getting all kinds of pieces of content and they're married to an image. When you're married to an image like that, experts tell us it actually is going to increase your click-through rates by as much as 15%. 15%. Isn't that crazy? So as you look at things like this, you'll notice that as you start at the top and you begin to scroll, obviously there's been a clear decision. So here if I stop, I've got about six, eight, ten choices. If I scroll to the next set of content, I've got six, eight, or ten uh, different places that I can go and I can look. If I scroll down and continue it further, what else do I have? Six, eight, or ten pieces of content. All of this is going to accurately impact your revenue because when you can showcase more content and you can increase your click-throughs, okay, your stickiness of your website, you're always going to have better page views. More page views equal more ad impressions. More ad impressions equals more ad inventory. All right, let's move on to the next website. Remember I showed you the Flash or HTML5 pop-up uh, on the Village Voice website. And now what I want to show you is a really cool pencil ad, or really a pencil banner ad opportunity. So notice right here we've got this ad for Diamond Vision. If you see it right now before I click on it, then it looks very small. It just says Laser Vision Correction. Now when I move my mouse over it, I'm off. Okay, now I'm on. What is it that I see? The ad actually expands and pushes down the template. Wow, this is really, really nice. Now some of you might say, whoa, Ryan, it's not going to happen. There's no way that I could do that. I'm just too small of a publisher. Guys, the important thing to remember is this. You can do this. There are designers that know how to do these type of HTML5 and Flash ads for you. Nearly every banner ad system, whether it's Main Street banners, whether it's Double Click for Publishers, whether it's OpenX, 24-7 Media, all of these banner ad systems will allow you to do really cool creative. Now, what's up with cool creative? Why does it matter? It matters because you have the ability then to go to advertisers with something new, something fresh, and something different. And that's why I absolutely think this is one of the coolest ads that we've seen deployed, uh, you know, basically in all the webinars uh, that we've done together. All right, let's look at a couple other things. You'll notice that they've centered their logo. I've talked about this before, so that you actually can put a banner ad on the left and the right side of the logo. Most of you could do this very easily within your templates. And the reason I know that you can is because I know that usually your logo is right here on the left, okay? It doesn't have to be. Move your logo to the middle. It allows you a really, really great, nice opportunity very quickly, okay, and very easily to be able to feature more advertising. All right, let's scroll down the page and see what else we have. The nice thing about that I really like, again, is you'll notice this blog style format, okay? This leads really nicely to native advertising or paid content. Now, let me be clear, I'm going to give you an example, but I'm not saying the Village Voice is doing this, all right? So as an example, if you have restaurants where you want to allow them to pay for placement, this might be how you feature them on the main page of the website. That way when you go and click into the blog post or that particular page, it allows you to be able to feature paid content on that page. Now, does it look like an article? It does, and in this case it is. I'm not saying that this is paid content. Just giving it to you as an example. One of the things you might consider doing with paid content is just calling the section a special promotional section or a special advertising section. But advertisers absolutely love to be included on your website, and they're willing to pay for it. I think this is a great way to feature those advertisers Put them together a blog, a blog post on the website, charge them for that. A lot of people say, hey, Ryan, how do you charge for it? Well, it really depends upon the website traffic. How much traffic does the website get? So I like to charge somewhere around $75 a thousand, somewhere around $100 a thousand. It really just kind of depends on your traffic, and it kind of depends upon your niche. So I like native content, and I really like paid content. The fact of the matter is, you've got to figure out nice ways to host it, okay, nice, nice ways to, to host it. All right, let's move on to our next website, and this is a website for Loss Prevention uh, Magazine. And loss Prevention is obviously uh, a business-to-business -business publication that focuses on the retail 
loss prevention business, okay? They want to help their readers uh, reduce theft within their retail stores. Now, why did I bring you to this website? A couple of reasons. One, they've got a thing called the LP Cloud, okay? See here at the top? The LP Cloud. And what that is is it's a lot of different services that they offer. Some of them are paid services. So it's a revenue opportunity. And by the way, you can see the uh, website addresses up here in the, in the top in the address bar uh, if you're looking to find out more about that. Okay, so this is lpportal.com. So the cloud at the top is sort of their networking bar, okay, or sort of their networking branding bar, which allows them to very easily be able to showcase the Eye on LP, which is a collection of videos, blogs, etc. Some of them might be paid. It allows them to be able to roll over and talk about Loss Prevention Magazine, okay? They're excellent, excellent magazine. It allows them to showcase their Loss Prevention Foundation, which are certification programs. It allows them to showcase Loss Prevention Jobs, services, and of course, their e-newsletter that's very popular. I love this example. I love the fact that the cloud lights up at the top. And big kudos uh, to all of my friends at Loss Prevention Magazine, really for uh, a job well done. Now, You'll also notice they've got a really unique flash rotator on the main page. Now, I would say uh, at the onset that I'm not a big fan of flash rotators any longer, but you know, I really like this one. The reason is, it's very clear, okay, which story that they're on. It's also really clear as it moves down where you need to click to be able to watch, or I'm sorry, to be able to read that story. It's something that makes a ton of sense to me. Now, from a revenue perspective, I like the fact that they have Interactive Advertising Bureau standard sizes. The simple fact that as you scroll down the page, they're nicely included. They're a part of the website design, and I love that. I also love the fact they've got videos featured here right on the main page. They also mention their loss prevention uh, app, and again, their current e-newsletter. They do a really nice job of integrating advertising, and I wanted to point them out to you. I think they're a very nice uh, B2B example. Really nice B2B example. All right, let's move on to the next website. And uh, I really think that uh, they do a nice job. Uh, April and the gang over at Orthopreneur do a really nice job with this B2B uh, website that focuses on the orthopedic surgeon industry. Well, they, do, they do a couple of really, really nice things. One of them is this OMTEC uh, 2014, which you'll see here. It's an excellent uh, event that they put on. I believe it's in Chicago. They do a really, really nice uh, job with that. Now, why I brought you to their website, besides being really nice uh, folks uh, up in uh, Ohio, is the fact they've got these really cool featured product spaces here in the right rail. Now, this is really cool, in my opinion, because instead of having banner ads, they're actually featuring products on the main page. Wow. Revenue 101, everybody, right? Really smart idea. Featuring these products on the main page. Advertisers go crazy about this. They absolutely love it. Hats off to the folks at Orthopreneur for having that on the main page. Now, of course, they've got your standard banner ads uh, as well. The fact of the matter is, if you can feature products, services, things like that, right on the main page of your website, wow, guys, that is a money-making opportunity. Now, let me point out a couple other things that I, I really like. I love the fact that they've got editor's picks right on the main page. I love the fact they've got this leaderboard, the 728 by 90, integrated into the design. You know, from a revenue perspective, I applaud publishers that integrate banner ads directly into their website. It makes a ton of sense. It just always, just looks great. It's something I highly encourage. You know, don't go and throw those banner ads out there in the middle of nowhere or out in the white space of your website. Integrate advertisers. Make them a part of your total advertising play. Good B2B example at orthopreneurpub.com. All right, how about another B2B example, right? We often get accused of only showing consumer examples, and that's really not the case uh, today. Hats off to my friends over at supplychainbrain.com. I bet you this is a website that you've not heard of unless you are in the supply chain business. Clearly the leader when it comes to Internet content on the web bar none. I'm just really being honest with you. It's really, really a great example. Look at this. Even their search box is sponsored. You see this? Even the search box is sponsored. Come on. That's awesome. 
Look at the 728 by 90 banner ad at the top. One of the things I want to point out to you, though, they've got a, a translator. Okay, so this is something that comes from Google, and it allows you to see the Google Translator. It allows the website to be translated into other languages. And check it out. It's sponsored as well. What don't these guys sponsor? Listen, it's because they're really smart. Okay, Kelly, Brad, the gang, I mean, you guys really do a nice job. Hats off to you. Now, why did I bring you here? I love their videos. These B2B videos are crazy popular. They help with search engine optimization. Advertisers love these videos. And if you watch the videos, go to their website. Check these videos out. They're great videos. Are they Steven Spielberg videos? No. Do they have to be? No. What they are is good quality content. And it's, it's able to be viewed on phones, iPads, Kindles, Droids, you name it. It's there, and it's right featured on the main page. One of the things you're going to notice about this website is that it's very well laid out. And so it allows search engines to be able to follow it quickly and easily. They've got supplier's guides. They've got resource guides. They've got videos. Guys, they've got over 70 different categories. Can you do this? You can. So they have a staff of 50 full-time people dedicated to this. They don't. But what they do is a really, really nice job. They put together some nice structure. They understand integrating revenue opportunities into their website. Folks, another great example of taking revenue to the next level. All right, let's go ahead and look at another consumer website. This is Elegant Island Living in the beautiful island, St. Simons Island, Georgia. My goodness, if you haven't been there, go to St. Simons Island and be sure to check out Elegant Island Living Magazine. Now, this is a website that's built with a content management system, a CMS that's called Metro Publisher. Now, why do I mention that? Because people ask me all the time, hey, Ryan, what content management system do a lot of your customers use? Well, honestly, Metro Publisher is one of the favorites because it's affordable and it has revenue built in, revenue opportunities built in. So let's take a look at their website, at their business directory, okay? The business directory component is built into their CMS. So what I'm looking at now are restaurants, okay? So notice it's going to show here on the right where the restaurants are. You're also then going to notice as we scroll down that they're available by alphabetical order, by type of restaurant, type of food, location, and things like that. You'll also notice that there's the opportunity, all right, to be able to have different things featured, okay, featured listings. So as an example, you can also go, let's, let's click into uh, uh, Brogan South and check it out. So they've got a picture, okay, of the restaurant. They also then show you the location of the restaurant. So you can zoom in and, and zoom out. You can get directions to the restaurant, okay, right down here. It's all built in with the Google, Google mapping tools. You can include videos, menus, and all kinds of different things. Now, Elegant Island Living has also began to uh, really embrace the fact that they've got a really nice, robust events calendar. Over here in searching their marketplace, let's go look at show all, let's go look at shopping. St. Simon's Island, Georgia, shopping. I think what we're going to find is you're going to notice they've got all kinds of really, really great shops. Now, one of the ways to make money from this is charge for featured listings, charge for listings that might be in a different color. But the other piece is a lot of small businesses don't have very good websites. So this allows them to be able to accurately and quickly be a part of a nice media enterprise, like uh, David Butler and Terry and the gang have put together an Elegant Island Living Magazine. Business directories, they're money makers, people, money makers. And that's why I like to show them off. All right, let's take a look at another B2B magazine. This is nailpro.com. And by the way, that last website was elegantislandliving.net. All right, now we're on to nailpro.com. Uh, and big uh, hats off to uh, uh, Deborah and, and the gang that's, uh, that's in uh, uh, Los Angeles and Van Nuys, California, taking care of this. Uh, Andrew and everybody out there, good job. Nail Pro is uh, the leader in terms of uh, providing a magazine to nail techs, um, people that do uh, nails uh, in nail uh, salons. And so for me, it's a really nice example of what you can do to really be user Focus. Now, what's the first thing uh, that we see right here? The first thing is the fact that they're showing you, hey, we want you to check this out digitally, okay, because they understand having a digital transition plan, okay, they understand having a digital 
transition plan. And that's why they're promoting it so heavily. Okay, they also have access to the digital edition here. Now, let's begin uh, to scroll down the page. Okay, you'll notice they've got some standard web sizes, but what they've done is they've been very user focused. Okay, so they've got winter art nail how tos, they've got competitions, they've got all kinds of galleries. Why is this important? It's important, guys, because you want to drive user traffic. You want to accurately identify what the users of your website, okay, what they want, all right? And, you know, I've sat down with these folks. I've sat down and had conversations with Mindy and the sales team and Deborah and the folks at, at this company. And they really, Stephanie, all these guys, they really understand in infinite detail what their users want and they deliver that back. Here's a really cool thing. They actually do nail pro competitions, okay? And so what are the competitions? Well, they, they accurately identified, look at all the sponsors up here on the top. Good for you guys. They've accurately identified and created competitions within their industry that make their people happy and give them recognition. All these kind of things happen on a very regular basis. You'll also notice they've got all kinds of different examples, styles. They, what they also do is they have areas on their websites that are actually dedicated to contests. Look this, at this one here. Let's go and look at giveaways. Giveaways allow you to be able to work with your advertisers in a revenue-centric environment to be able to show off their products and their services. Now, do you do this for people that don't advertise? Mm, I probably wouldn't, but you can, all right? What I want to do is I want to take care of my advertisers. They spend some money with me. I'm going to put them in the contest and giveaway section. Look at this. All kinds of contests all kinds of giveaways. Look at all these pages of contests. Come on, this is crazy. Absolutely love it. Well done by the folks at Creative Age uh, Publications uh, out in California. All right, also out in California, let's take a look at San Francisco Weekly. Why am I showing you this example? I'm showing you sfweekly.com because let's be honest, guys, this website is really progressive. Yeah, it's a part of a big media company. Don't even think for a second that you can't make these things happen. There are content management systems out there that will hold your hand and guide you through everything that's happening. Now, notice what we've got going on here. We've got a site takeover that's happening. You'll notice that here in the margins of the website, okay, you've got Tequila Express. Over here in the margins of the website, you've got a site takeover going on. And watch the pencil ad. The pencil ad expands, okay, and it shows the advertisement as well. Now. For those of us in the ad sales business, this kind of stuff makes me like, whoo, it's be giddy. Love it. Absolutely love this kind of stuff. Why do I love it so much? Because it smells like, that's right, money. It smells like money. Now, some of you might say, Ryan, calm down, man. I mean, this is, you're getting too excited about this. Folks, let me share something with you. When you get excited about revenue, when you get excited about new ideas, that's the spice of life because we need to make some money from our websites, don't we? So we're looking for creative, really, really cool ideas to help drive revenue. So I absolutely love uh, this concept, absolutely love uh, this idea, and just really give my hats off to SF Weekly and, of course, to the entire gang for making it happen. Now, let's take a look else at what else they're doing on the website. Now, look, I'm scrolling down the page, and guess what happens? The takeovers and the, on the margins, they're staying there. I love that. Makes so much sense. All right. They've got great calendars going on. They're featuring, okay, their articles as blogs in this blog post uh, type format. You'll notice that as you scroll down, there's so much to look at. It makes it very easy for you to find all kinds of different things. I absolutely love it. Good job. And encourage you folks at home to consider looking at these site takeovers as a way to drive revenue and a way to drive traffic. Okay, now, let's look now at City Weekly. Uh, this is a, a magazine that's in Salt Lake City, uh, Utah. I want to share a couple of things with you here that I found to be very, very good. First of all, I like the fact that City Weekly has their cover here in the upper right-hand corner. About a year ago, uh, I was in Los Angeles uh, at a meeting of uh, subscription professionals, okay? And what they said to me is this. They said, hey, Ryan, what we've always found is that when we put offers for either subscriptions or giveaways or whatever, in that upper right-hand corner, we always see an uptick 
always see an uptick. And I absolutely love seeing an uptick in, in sales. Now, in signups for things. Now, notice, again, their ro this does not rotate. Guys, I mean, I hate to break the news to you. Some of you really love your main page rotators, but quite honestly, you're noticing a lot of big websites are getting rid of that concept because they've realized that by leaving one static image, they just get more clicks. They drive more traffic. But I like the fact that here are four other stories well represented in a graphical way. So rather than just rotate, you've got these here. I think it's, it's quite good. I really, really like it in a, in a very robust way. Now, one of the things also I like about this website, it's black and white. Now, what, what's with the black and white? I like black and white websites because I think they're clean. They remind me of one of my favorite industries, which is the newspaper industry, okay? And uh, that was a little wink-wink there. They love that. And I also like the fact because it makes the advertisements really stand off the page. One of the things that's really interesting to me is that very often advertisers are treated like second-class citizens. I mean, they're included in kind of weird ways on the website. They're not integrated well within the website. I mean, look at this 300 by 600 ad here, okay, this large box, this large rectangle. This is the new fat brother, if you will, or the fat cousin, okay, of the 160 by 600, which was that's a skyscraper banner ad. This is the replacement. Don't you like it better? Well, a lot of publishers don't. Why don't they like it better? Well, they don't because it takes up a lot of space. Folks, here's the fact. We've got to keep these advertisers happy. They absolutely love the bigger banner ads. You know, I see a lot of you that are doing little teeny tiny tile ads, and unfortunately my thought on that is this. Tiny ads, <coughs> excuse me, equal tiny ad decisions. Tiny ads equal tiny ad dollars. So, uh, you know, that's kind of where I'm at on that, it, and hopefully it makes, uh, makes some sense. So the fact is we're always looking for as many opportunities as possible to create nice big ads that will really, really keep our advertisers happy, all right? All right, now let's move on over here to the next website. Wow, love this one. This is chicagomag.com. Oh, by the way, the last website was cityweekly.net, okay? So you can check that out. All right, Chicago Magazine. Gosh, love these guys. They do such a great job. They're so progressive in the Internet space. Uh, they hold themselves to unreal, un crazy high standards because they're just such perfectionists. Such a nice job. This is their marketplace and classified section. So what they've done is they've really created an area uh, for their users to be able to go and find the premier information, all right? So you come here and you can find classifieds. You can find real estate and realtors. You've got shopping guides, services, getaways. Guys, this format is beautiful. It's easy to find. It's eye-appealing, it's catchy, it's really, every, and almost every one of these areas is filled with advertisers. I mean, this is just reeking in a good way of revenue. Let's check it out and go inside one of the sections. What you're also going to find inside a lot of these guides and sections is an opportunity for advertisers to be really intimately connected uh, to all of this content. And the reason that I find that to be so unbelievably important is because when advertisers feel like they're a part of the website, that, that is when they get really, really excited, okay? That's when they get really excited about the opportunities that are presented in front of you. Now, if you go over to YouTube, one of the things you could do is you can go and you can check out uh, what they do uh, with uh, real estate on their YouTube channel, and they sell uh, into that as well. Notice how clean this is, how it makes a ton of sense, and now also notice something here. As I scroll down the page, one of the things you're going to notice is that I'm able to see the search bar at the top. It stays with me. Okay, do you notice that? Nice, really nice design feature. You're noticing one thing that I'm showing you a lot of today, and that is really clean, simple, straightforward website design. Okay, it really makes a ton of sense. All right, now let's take a look at the main page here. We've left the marketplace, Chicago Mag. Com. We're headed over here to the main page uh, of the website. You'll notice as I scroll down the page, they do a really, really nice job, again, of featuring content. Notice this isn't so rotating. You're also going to notice uh, here on the right, they've got their ads clearly stands off of the page. You can get their e-newsletters by selecting here. One of the things I hope that you'll notice is that people are packaging content in unique and different ways today. 
It's very clean, and this is called a blog list format. Also, what I really like is this most popular, all right? Now, this is something that tends to be going away on a lot of websites, and guys, I sure wish that it wouldn't. Facts are facts. People love to be led, okay? They love to be led through the website. And most popular, what it does is it really makes it work in a really, really nice and straightforward and really, really robust way. So I absolutely love it. Now, the other thing I wanted to point out to you is you'll notice I've got an ad here at the bottom of the website. Many of you do not. Let's talk about the revenue implications of not having banner ads at the bottom of the website. Now, even if you don't sell that spot, even if you don't sell it for one penny, by adding a 728 by 90 to the footer of the page, it will basically double the number of impressions that are available. Now, the interesting piece is, will it make your click-through rate potentially go down? It can, but here's an interesting point of note. We've actually studied if people click on banner ads at all. The answer is yes, they do, especially in the world of niche magazines. Do they click on ads at the bottom of the website? Absolutely, 100%, they do. Now, do they click on ads at the top more frequently? Absolutely, they do. Of course, they do. But the fact, the fact of the matter is, you should figure out ways to be able to include videos, for example, right here, all right, as well as advertising all throughout the website. And using banner ads at the bottom of the website still works very well to be able to drive ad impressions. All right, ChicagoMag.com, good job, everybody. Absolutely love the website. You need to go hang out there a little bit, everybody, and check it out. I think that you will really like it. All right, last uh, website we're going to look at is c-ville.com, okay, seville.com here. And a couple things I really, I really like about this. You'll notice that their events calendar is very prominent here on the right. Now, many of you actually don't sell into your events calendar, and I would tell you that's actually a huge mistake. Um, event promoters will pay for inclusion in your calendar, all right? Now, you kind of have to make a choice. Are we going to do it or are we not going to do it? Uh, the fact of the matter is I would charge people for inclusion. Even if it's only 5 bucks. it's $5 that at least covers the person inputting the event into your database. Now, a lot of times people don't charge for it because they don't know how to charge for it. I would say charge for it. Figure it out. Now, you'll notice here on the right, though, that look at how they're displaying some of this content here on the right. I like that a lot. So you've got your main page image. And holy cow, guys, look again. Another example of a website that doesn't have a rotating front end. Now, I'm going to share this with you again. I think if you move to a single you know, picture, you're going to see a pickup in click-through rates, especially if you're starting to do native advertising, okay? So let's, I really, really like that. I'll scroll down the page, and I really like how they've gone and they've featured three different stories from three different articles, all right? Now, let's talk about native advertising or paid content one more time because a lot of you really don't understand what it is that I'm talking about, okay? Now, just to be clear, I'm not saying that on the Seville website here, okay, that that's what they're doing. I'm just going to use this article here as an example, you approach an advertiser, you talk to them about running ads in your magazine or your newspaper. You're able then to say to them, we also have the opportunity as a part of that total ad package where we'll actually write an article about your business. In this case, you might uh, write an article, okay, about a place called Burger Bash, okay? And so when you click on this, it's promoted on the main page, it looks like an article, okay? It feels like an article, or I guess the restaurant is called The Corner, okay? It looks like an article, it feels like an article, and it looks like an article, because it is an article. It's got a nice piece of imagery. Now, again, I'm not saying this is paid content, just trying to give you an example. So what you might consider doing is maybe here on the left, maybe calling it what it is, a special promotional article, or a special advertising section, or whatever it is. You might be able to do it here in the caption. There's a lot of different ways to, to highlight this. Now, why am I such a big proponent of native advertising? I'm a proponent, guys, because I know that advertisers like to pay for this stuff, okay? And if you don't do it, somebody else is going to do it. And I think that it's really important for all of you to understand that if you don't do it, somebody else will in your marketplace, and they're going to clean your clock. So that's why I think that it's very, very important for you to embrace it and check it out and to make it happen. All right? All right, so again, let's roll through in, in a brief review. First of all, native content I think is awesome, so I applaud Seville for having uh, events at the top and being able to do a nice job of, 
of featuring their content, and of course, integrating their banner ads uh, right into the website. Go over to Chicago Magazine, check out their marketplace. They've done a really, really nice job of featuring their advertisers in their marketplace. And again, I love uh, the uh, black and white uh, design of this website as well as uh, City Weekly. And City Weekly, I love the fact that the main image doesn't rotate, but yet they push you deeper into the website. I like the black and white design because the advertisements stand out. Here on San Francisco Weekly, sfweekly.com, I love the site takeover ads and the fact that this little pencil ad here at the top expands to show advertising for Tequila Express all over the website in a very big, robust way. Over on Elegant Island Living, I love the business directory, paid inclusions. If you had, say, 100 advertisers paying just $25 a month, some great uh, revenue, I'd love for you to consider that. Over on NailPro, check out NailPro.com. Their contests are phenomenal. Their resources, their videos are absolutely phenomenal. It's really a great way for you to be able to use videos in an effort to drive traffic as well as keep your advertisers happy. Speaking of videos, the folks over at Supply Chain Brain absolutely love the video content that's here on the main page of their website. Check it out. I think that you're going to really enjoy it. Also notice their search here is sponsored as well as their page translator. All right? Don't forget about the featured products here over on Orthopreneur Magazine. Absolutely, absolutely love those featured products. And here at Loss Prevention Portal, I love the fact that they've done such a nice job of integrating their products and their services into the overall campaign. Well, thanks so much for joining me today, everybody. I hope you learned something in terms of website design and revenue-centric website design. Of course, I'm always available to answer your questions and to help you be a raging web success when it comes to advertising sales. My name is Ryan Dorn, and my website is 360adsales.com. Absolutely love to uh, take you on a trip down revenue lane. Thanks so much to the folks at Schwecky Media for everything that they do for all of us. And uh, for, uh, for Gal Schwecki and Steve and Dave and everybody over there, thanks so much for joining us, everybody. And we'll see you next time right here on our very next Schwecki Business Booster webinar. Take care.